Good morning. I have a question. Does anybody out here, anyone out there know how to sign? Okay, we'll work on that because uh, today we're going to be doing a number of motions and I thought we could have added that, but that's okay. Um, as we prepare our hearts and minds uh, for worship and our souls, I invite you to please stand as we sing, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And following that, we'll do the opening hymn. So. I invite you online to open your prayer books to page 355, and in the church you can use your bulletins. Bless thee God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
I invite you to recite the song of praise together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated and invite the children to please come forward. And I'd like you to come all the way up here this time. And this is a participatory children's sermon. So be ready, adults. Welcome. So today, the theme, the theme for Sunday school is going to be what's a friend, friendship. And you all have been given a piece of, of ribbon, if you will. We want you to write on that ribbon your definition of friendship and then drop it in. Oh, excuse me. Stay right there just a minute. Drop it in this, uh, I guess we call it a prayer pot as you come forward because the children are going to surprise you next Sunday with what they do with it. But friendship. So this morning, Jesus, we're going to read the gospel where Jesus heals a blind person, Bartimaeus, and where Peter and John, who are going up to pray, heal a lame person who couldn't walk. And I'll bet you they became friends. I bet you Bartimaeus became a friend to Jesus. And I'll bet you the person that was lame became a friend to Peter and John. So there's a song that goes with this, with motions. You're going to have to be active this morning. So here's how it goes. It's Peter and John went to pray. They saw a lame man on the way. He held out his arms and he asked, held out his palms and asked for alms. And this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And here's where it goes. And he went, can you do this with me? Walking, come on, walk walking and leaping and praising god walking and leaping and praising god in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk we're going to sing it again rise up people and i want you walking and leaping you know uh, Jane Clemens was sharing with me a story when she was a child and very ill. And her mother said, raise your hands up and say, Jesus, help me. Let's all do that. One, two, three. Jesus, help me. Bartimaeus said, Jesus, have mercy on me. Okay? That's, that's one reason I ask you all to stand and use motions when we say, bless the Lord, O my soul. Because part of what we do in this liturgical tradition is we use all of our bodies, our mind and our soul. So we're going to sing this song with emotions. Are you ready? And if you all know it, sing with me. Peter and John went to pray. They saw a lame man on the way. He asked for alms and he held out his palms. And this is what Peter did say. Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have give I thee, 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Are you ready? And he went walking. Wait a minute, you're getting ahead of the game. We got to walk before we leap, crawl before we walk, sleep before we do anything else, and sleep after we do whatever else. He went walking and leaping and praising God. Walking and leaping and praising God in the name of Jesus Christ <sighs> of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Boom, boom, boom. You may be seated. So, uh, one thing I know, no, not you all, because you all are heading up to Sunday school, I hope. Um, the most important, important thing that we have to offer is not silver and gold it's the message of the gospel what's that and love. and love absolutely and the love part is god loves you and me no exceptions now head on upstairs and do what you all do and now we'll do what we do who's reading job Oh, good, I'm glad it's Bob, because i got a lot to say about Job. So, surprise. In this reading of Job, bye, is Job's response to being addressed by God. Job says, I didn't get an answer to my question. My mind is too small. My heart is too small. I think our minds and hearts are too small to understand how much God loves us, no exceptions. But for in this story, which is a fictional story, Job says, it's enough that I've heard you, and in his case, he says he sees God. That's what we're all seeking. That close encounter with God. Because I can tell you, when you have that close encounter, all your questions fade away. Because the answer is right there. And that peace that passes all understanding comes into your heart and mind. Okay, Bob. A reading from Job. Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear, and I will speak. I will question you, and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, and now my eyes see you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortune to Job when he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his whole house. They showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil thing, evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a minute. Did you say the evil that God brought on Job? That's, that is correct. Do you believe that? I believe it. Do you believe that? Let me just say this. The author of the poem, now you notice there's poetry here and prose here. For those of you that didn't take English grammar, Gary, will you explain the difference between poetry and prose? No, no he will not. So this, this long, long book of Job begins with some prose. God's in his courts, and he and Satan are having a dialogue, and God's bragging about how great Job is, but, and he allows Satan to test him. And then you have this humongous long poem and that's the poem that ends with, where were you when I created the universe? Explain to me that, and I'll explain to you suffering. The one that wrote the prose, I'm beginning to think, 
might have been a different author from the poet. But the, the heart of this is not that you're going to get rewarded. And we could preach a prosperity gospel here. And, and we do preach a prosperity. God's love is overflowing. And you can think whatever you want, Bob, about that. Okay? Thank you. You're, you're welcome. They showed him sympathy and comfort. him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. And he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first son Jemimeth, the second son Kezah, and the third Kareen Hapchuk, in all the land, there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived for 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations, and Job died old and full of days. The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is Psalm 34, <clears throat> verses 1 through 8, found on the page 627 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please respond on the whole verse. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him, and he will deliver them. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. The epistle this morning is from Acts 3, 1 through 10. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a man lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. And Peter directed his gaze at him with John and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention upon them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but I give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat for alms at the beautiful gate at the temple. And they, fill, they filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Gospel reading. <clears throat> Yeah. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. And as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still, and he said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed Jesus on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I've always been struck in this gospel story that Jesus bothers to ask what the person wants. So often, we uh, presume what somebody may want or need. Uh, one of the uh, things we're learning with uh, the group of us that are considering uh, helping some Afghan refugees resettle was we learned in a webinar that have curiosity. Have curiosity about what's on their mind, what's on their hearts, what, what they want or need. And they tell the humorous story of every time they went to de- uh, this this. Uh, Walt, how do you pronounce his name? Bakhtash Ahadi. He came here in the 1980s as a six-year-old, and a Lutheran church sponsored that family at the time. And every week they'd invite him to dinner, a different member of the church. Each time they served them lasagna. And the thing about cheese in Afghanistan, it it has no real flavor to it, and ours does, and they didn't like cheese. But the the host thought they looked a little Sicilian, I think it was, and so they just assumed they would like lasagna. So, being curious, Jesus engages Bartimaeus with the question, what do you want? And I think Jesus engages us with that same question. What is it you really want? What is it you really want from God or from your experience of worship or your experience in the community? What a, what a great thing to realize that God is curious about us. And God is curious. In the story of Adam and Eve, when uh, Adam is, is created out of the earth, But it's not good that you live alone, so God created animals to see if any of the animals would be a helpmate for Adam. And the scripture says, he brought the animals to Adam to see what Adam would name them. Now that would imply maybe God's not omniscient after all. Maybe he's waiting on us. It reminds me of looking 
at my newborn baby and just wondering, how will this child turn out? God wonders that about you and me. Could be he wonders about you and me and how we are turning out. God is curious about you and me. And the, the, again, the cool thing in this story is Bartimaeus cries out, just like Jane did, Jesus, help me. Lord, have mercy on me. You know the story, I think, of the fellow in Russia who just walked around Russia saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And that's probably where our Kyrie has so much power for us. In both these stories of Peter and John, the lame man follows Peter and John into the temple. And it's interesting, they're on their way to pray. I wonder what we'll find on our way to pray. Whether we do it at home or pray here. Those are my insights for this morning. We are going to bypass the Nicene Creed. I think we said it right last week. Um, and we will renew our baptismal vows when we install the Daughters of the King today. So the prayers of the people are uh, found in your bulletin. Or I think they're also found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer for those of you on Facebook Live and Zoom praying with us. So I invite you to please stand as you're able for prayers. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for and hold authority in the nation. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. sins either standing or kneeling and you will need to see it in the bulletin let us confess our sins to God God of all mercy we confess that we have sinned against you opposing your will in our lives we have denied your goodness in each other in ourselves and in the world you have created we repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. I invite you to please stand and greet one another in the name of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
I remind you that to use your bulletin for the Lord's Prayer, we'll be using a version, uh, an indigenous version of the Lord's Prayer that the bishop sent us, which I think is very powerful. Remind you that um, a bunch of us are going to Jackson for skiing and staying at a fancy hotel. Oh, no, no, wait a minute. We're going for convention. We're going for work. And we have to dress uh, in our favorite sinner or saint, and I'll definitely, you'll see a picture of me as a sinner. And, well, not of me as a sinner, me playing a sinner. And I brought a costume for one of you that are going with us. Um, remind you, please put your ribbons with uh, what you believe a friend is, the qualities uh, in the prayer pot as you come. And just to give you an update on the uh, Afghan committee, we had our first meeting uh, yesterday with four members of the table who are sort of co-sponsoring this with us. Um, and I've gotten, I got a, a letter, several letters from Maryland, but a check from a person who heard about us in the Washington Post. Um, we've gotten a commitment of $5,000 from another church in the diocese and other churches have said they're willing to help us out. So, and I know the bishop is excited about this. I think it will work. Our biggest concerns will be finding housing and transportation, which I'm gonna wonder if any snowbirds, if you're watching from Arizona, would want to let me live in your house during the winter because then I can turn my house over to the Afghan refugee, which is a, probably going to be a large family. Let me know. Um, if you have contacts in the community for health care or social services or any of that, please speak with either Walt. Walt, stand up, wait, raise your hand. He's the chair of our committee or myself. And other than that, are there any other announcements before we do birthdays, anniversaries, and Daughters of the King? Anybody with birthdays and anniversaries want to come down? Then I invite the Daughters of the King to please come forward. And why don't we stand up here where people can see us. I want to say one thing about the Daughters of the King. They are a group of ladies who... Uh, are committed to prayer and study and spreading the kingdom of God, but their most important task is to pray for the rector yes. <laughs> every day. Amen. For the sake of this congregation, you should do that to make sure I suppress most of my ideas. Uh, but truly this is, uh, and you all meet uh, once or twice a month now, is that correct? Once twice a month? A month. Twice a month. Uh, for prayer and study and, and possibly a program. Come on forward. And we are installing some new members. And Pat, will you introduce the new members? Yes. The new members are Jane Clemens, Shannon Clark, and Maggie Boyne. Excellent. And interesting enough, all three of them tend to be on morning prayer every morning, um, either on Zoom, Facebook, or some other means. Okay, I'm ready for the presider to present. We are gathered here in the sight of God and before this congregation to admit these women into the order of the daughters of the king. We commend them to your earnest prayers that they may have grace to fulfill the obligations of the order and their, their labors may be to the glory of God and to the welfare of all of his people. This is addressed to the three candidates. The Daughters of the King is an order for women whose mission is the extension of Christ's kingdom especially among women and girls, through prayer, service, and evangelism. Do you desire to become a member of the Order of the Daughters of the King? I do. 
Do you promise to obey faithfully the two rules of the order, the rule of prayer and the rule of service, to offer your support to the clergy for the good of the parish and the extension of Christ's kingdom, and to wear faithfully the cross of the order and to work for its purposes as God may give you the opportunity? I do with God's help. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, I receive and admit you as members of the order of the daughters of the king. This next uh, question is at baptisms and weddings are probably is probably the most important question and that's to the congregation. And I ask you, will you support these women in their ministry of prayer and service? Now I invite you to turn in your bulletin to the baptismal vows. And uh, you probably didn't bring your bulletin, so just do your job of listening, as the rest of us uh, say. But this is part of your vows as well. Uh, the, the vows are right after the Nicene Creed, if you're searching. And let us say, let us say together... We will, with God's help, continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, the breaking of the bread and the prayers. We will, with God's help, persevere in resisting evil, and whenever we fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. We will, with God's help, proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. We will, with God's help, Seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving our neighbors as ourselves. We will, with God's help, strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. May God give us the desire, the will, and ability to fulfill these vows. And now to bless the, uh, the crosses. Set them right here. Thank you. Bless, O Lord, these crosses and grant to your servants now admitted into this order such an abundance of your grace that they may wear this sacred symbol in the spirit of humility with devotion to the service of the King of Kings. Amen. Am I saying this, or are you all? I'm okay. Okay. Accept and wear faithfully the cross of the order, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take up your cross. Shannon, accept and wear faithfully the cross of the order, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take up your cross and follow me. Maggie, accept and wear faithfully the cross of the order, remembering the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Take up your cross and follow me. And now I invite the new members to enter into prayer as found in the bulletin. Almighty God, help me to pray so faithfully that I may draw near to you and learn your will. Help me to serve so joyfully that others may be drawn to you. May your Holy Spirit guide me each day that all I think, do, or say may be pleasing in your sight. I ask it all for the sake of him whose cross I wear, my King and my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And now all the daughters. O oh, Eternal Father, you have sent us your Son to teach us things pertaining to your heavenly kingdom. Give your blessing to our order, wherever it may be throughout the world. Grant that we, your daughters, ever may discern your truth and bear the cross throughout our earthly life. 
Give us strength to overcome temptation and the grace to work to spread your kingdom and to gather your scattered sheep within your fold. Pour out upon us the sevenfold gift of the Holy Spirit, that we may always remember it is your work we are called to do, that all we think, do, or say may be pleasing in your sight. We ask it all for his sake, our King and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May your love, O Lord, help the daughters live lives of love. May your holiness lead them to be examples of virtue, that they, strengthened by your Holy Spirit, may pray and serve you all their days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. And welcome. Congratulations. I want you to know, just stay here just a minute. The daughters took coffee hour today, and they have made this beautiful cake, which I have not sampled yet, even though it was there and nobody was looking, and I didn't take it. Uh, after church, we'll have a reception in the parish hall. I invite other ministries that we have here to consider taking on a coffee hour for the sake of the congregation, choir, building committee, Bestry, Altar Guild, Outreach Committee, Worship, le thank you, Worship <laughs> Leaders, Rector. Rector, Clergy, Laura, come back! And uh, are we done? We're done. Okay, and I, I want to let you also know that I'm probably one of the few male members of the Daughters of the King, 50 years ago at my father's church, he was the rector, I would meet in a prayer group every week with the Daughters of the King, and that group was the foundation for a beautiful spiritual renewal in our church. So you never know when you pray what's going to happen. Thank you all. What? Take a picture? Yeah. Uh, Pamela, take a picture of everybody, please. Get the three new ones in the center. And the short people. Help me, Jesus. Yep. Everybody raise their hand. Send that to me so I can put it in the newsletter. And now, scribe unto the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Let's say a special prayer for Emma. She begins a new life in Collins. She continues her wonderful life in Collins. Let us pray. Lord, we lift up Emma and her entire family to you and give thanks for the life they've lived in our community. May Emma feel surrounded by your love in the new community she travels to, inhabits, and makes a home. May she always know not only that you love her, no exceptions, but we love her, no exceptions. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Oh, and I also wanted to welcome one, one other visitor here. Leah, would you please stand up? She, she's the prodigal college kid that's back in town, so we're glad to have you back in town. We should have recruited you to Acolyte today. Hit it. Choir.
Come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. For those of you at home, uh, you can turn in the prayer book to page 369, reminding you that actually the Lord's Prayer will be a different version that we have in our bulletins and that you have in your bulletins at home. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, 
the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in reciting this hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord God of our mothers, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray this special version of the Lord's Prayer together. O oh, great Spirit, our Father from above, we honor your name as sacred and holy. Bring your good road to us, where the beauty of your ways in the spirit world above us is reflected in the earth below. Provide for us day by day the elk, the buffalo, and the salmon, the corn, the squash, and the wild rice, all the things we need for each day. Release us from the things we have done wrong. In the same way, release others for the things done wrong to us. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I want to remind you as you come forward to pick up a chalice uh, and bring it to the altar rail or to the side altar and your chalice will be filled. 
body of Christ, the bread of
For those of you at home, if you open your prayer books to page 365 for the post-communion prayer, for those here, you'll find it near the end of the bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. The, the final hymn will be Lift High the Cross we, because that's the, the theme, uh, the the. So, the hymn for the daughters of the king. And that hymn number is what? 473. Lift high the cross, hymn 473. Go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Praise be to God.
Hallelujah. 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 Woo.